Haiti. You have actually lived in Haiti. Four and a half years. What is it like in Haiti? Oh my gosh, it's extremely hot. Yeah. Everybody always thinks you're on a tropical island. Mm -hmm. um, there's no electricity. Every once in a while, you know, probably a couple of hours a day we had electricity. There's no real running water. Uh, there's no water system, so you have to buy water, put it in the cistern in the ground, pump it to the roof when there's electricity, and then it just falls. So um, it's, it's crazy. Um, it's a very politically turmoil state. Uh -huh. They're in constant turmoil. Uh -huh. uh, the president, we have a new president, and he's trying his best to get things in order people aren't buying it. Yeah, There's I would imagine it's very hard to turn the ship around. It's heading in a direction they're trying to turn it around and some people probably don't want to go along with that. Not too many. Yeah. Problem is the ship's not turning and going in the wrong direction, the ship's going down. Oh. So, so he's, <laughs> That's a he's, better analogy. <laughs> he's trying to turn it around while bailing, so it's, it's a little crazy. And uh, uh, politically right now, everything's in a turmoil. But uh, some beautiful people, absolutely great people. Mm -hmm. We love them to death. Um, some that you kind of wish you didn't know, but the most the most of the people in Haiti are just fantastic. I think you find that pretty much everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Some of the people you just mm, don't. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so you're with Project One Haiti. Yes, that is your organization. We started that mm -hmm. um, right after the earthquake mm -hmm. um, in. Uh, May of 2010, okay. and it's been going ever since. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to help widows and orphans in their time of distress, and there's a bunch of them yeah. in Haiti. Yeah. Um, we had an orphanage for a while with as many as 19 kids mm -hmm. living with us. Right now we've only got seven. The orphans in Haiti are more like foster care system. Okay. There's not uh, a real good way of describing it other than that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids that we had living with us are not true orphans. Okay. They have parents, but their parents just can't feed them. Yeah. I mean, we've had several of them brought to us that were literally starving to death. Mm -hmm. And if we hadn't gotten them in a couple of two or three weeks, they'd have been dead. So. Yeah. And we'll learn more about Project One Haiti. You're watching Serving's Kitchen with a Cause, where we're all about featuring organizations that are helping people. Uh, and that's exactly what you guys are doing. That's what we're trying to do. That's right. That's what... Now, at this point in the show, we want to talk about what we're cooking today. Ah, yes. And I'll give you a clue. Typically what we do is we try to theme what we're cooking in relation to the organization that we are featuring. So Yes. He says this is a surprise. <laughs> it's a surprise. surprise. So she has know. no idea. <laughs> All right. You ready for the ingredients? Oh, yes. All right. Here we go. Oh yeah, plantains. Yep. Lots of plantains. Yep, so one of the recipes is plantains and a spicy dipping sauce. Yes. And then there is another recipe, and I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you one of the ingredients is not out here, and it's chicken. Chicken. Chicken, so I know chicken, pork, uh, goat, lamb. Goat, lamb. Very Big popular, time. very popular. So we're going with chicken today. We're doing a Haitian stewed chicken. All right. So we're going Haiti. We're doing Haitian food today, <laughs> which is appropriate. Project One Haiti. Uh, so when we come back, we're going to start the uh, longer of the two recipes, which is the Haitian stewed chicken. We'll be right back. All right. The first thing we're going to do is cook mm -hmm. the Haitian stewed chicken. Okay. And the first step in that process is we need to make the marinade. Oh, yes. All right, so I've got, and I've also got some oil heating up over here. We're going to saute the, the chicken, just kind of brown it so mm -hmm. that we can get that nice uh, caramelized taste to it. Oh, yeah. Because when you stew, you're not really getting that, that crispiness, so you want to do that first. Oh, yeah. All right, so in our food processor over here, we're going to add some salt, garlic, scallions, thyme, a pepper, like a hot pepper and a green pepper, half of a green pepper. Okay. Now, typically in Haitian food, they're using scotch bonnet peppers. Oh, yes, yeah, scotch bonnet. That is like every recipe I saw, scotch bonnet. However, around here, they're very difficult to find. I haven't seen any since I've been back. I did not find any. However, the cousin to the scotch bonnet is the habanero. And the only difference is the scotch bonnet is a little sweeter 
Mm -hmm. But as far as spice, they're almost they're exactly the same. About the same. So we're going to be good with an avinero. All right, so what I'm going to do is grab some salt, about a pinch of salt, throw that in there. I'll go ahead and cut up the green pepper, and I'm going to put you to work in just All a few right, minutes. All right, anything. So we're just doing half. Get rid of the seeds. And since we're putting it in the, in the food processor, we don't have to cut it up very well. I'm just gonna do some chunks. Throw those in there. And it says two of these green onions. You get two nice sized ones. push our seeds over, get rid of the nasty stuff on there. So how long have you been in Haiti? Uh, we started going down right after the earthquake, but uh -huh. uh, we actually lived there for a little over four years. Okay. And were you down there full time or how, how often did you come back? We came back about every three months because I still have two daughters and son-in-laws and grandkids and something about you got to see those kids <laughs> you once gotta in a while. You got to come back. You got to come back so you can spoil them. Oh yeah, just a little bit. All right, we've got some thyme over here. Add a little bit of that. Let's not add a whole bunch. Now you can use fresh thyme as mm -hmm. well. That's preferred, but. We're going with dried thyme today. Mommy Vey would have used fresh thyme, yeah. yes. All right, and we've got our habanero pepper. And I'm gonna grab something to scoop out the seeds. That way I'm not touching it. I wanna touch it as little as possible. I did have a show one time mm -hmm. where I chopped an habanero and then I touched my eye. Yeah, that. Uh... That wasn't good. Not good. No, we had to uh, pause for a little bit while I put my face in a bucket of water. Because <laughs> <laughs> it will put you on fire. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, fortunately we're doing the show out by a pool and uh, we had a big uh, container of drinks and ice mm -hmm. and the ice had melted. So there was ice water. Mm -hmm. That's where my face went. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, so we've got the salt. Uh, I need to add garlic. We got the scallions, thyme, pepper, both the peppers. We're also gonna do a half a cup of water. So okay. if you would, there's a measuring cup if you'll add a half a cup of water in there. And I'm gonna cheat with the garlic. I'm gonna use some of the pre-prepared garlic so oh, yeah. we're not dirtying up our hands and a half a teaspoon is the equivalent of a clove, and mm -hmm. we want three cloves. One, two, and three. Thank you. And then our half cup of water. A lot of strong flavors in there, but this is a marinade, so you want strong flavors. And then we're just gonna turn this on. Let it get nice and processed. It's gonna be good. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now what we'll do is we're gonna pour this over about eight pieces of chicken, mm -hmm. whatever you know types you want, and then we're gonna marinate it for four hours. Okay. We don't have four hours to marinate this chicken, so. Last night, I made some marinade, and I marinated the chicken. Sounds good. <laughs> so I made the marinade last night, put the oh, pieces yeah. of chicken in here, let it sit in the refrigerator overnight, because you can do it longer than four mm -hmm. hours. And then what we're gonna do now is we're going to remove the chicken one by one and put it in here and brown it, like I said. Okay, So Sounds if you good. would, Go into that cabinet and grab us a plate. That 
that's where we will put our chicken after we get it nice and browned. So one piece at a time, and I'm gonna kinda knock off the, uh, the marinade a little bit because we're gonna reserve the marinade for the final dish. And like I said, we wanna brown both sides of the chicken. This will probably take about 10 minutes. And while we're doing this, tell us about Project 180 and what it is all about, what's your mission, what are you guys trying to do down there? Well, we had started off trying to help orphans and widows, and mm -hmm. we still do. But we found out that there's so many kids that are not going to school. We would be driving up the street or walking up the street, see dozens of six, seven, eight-year-olds out walking the streets, not going to school. Wow. So we decided that we had to help them with school. Our yeah. kids were going to school, but these kids weren't. School's not free in Haiti. You pay for your uniform, you pay for your books, you pay for everything. You pay tuition. And sometimes tuition is $20, $30 a month. Mm -hmm. So if a family has three or four kids, you gotta That's remember the average pay in Haiti is anywhere from $100 to $400 a month. So if you got three, four, five kids, That's somebody's not that going. Yeah. Uh, and that would happen a lot is that a mother would send one kid for a year, the next year she'd send another kid, and, and that takes a long time for a kid to get to where they're proficient at anything. Mm -hmm. So we started a free school, um, and we have about 200 kids in our school. Mm -hmm. um, and this year we are helping other kids. We've got another orphanage that we're partnering with, another school that has about 100 children, and maybe a, a third school that's got 125. Wow. So we're gonna have about 400 kids. So there's a lot of school supplies, a lot right. of teachers pay and things. Um, the average teacher gets 100 or so dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So any teachers out there that wanna help? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but we've got, we've got a lot of kids that need a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so we ship down school supplies, we ship down uh, a lot of food because mm -hmm. we feed them lunch every day. At our school, we feed lunch and breakfast, mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of food that goes yeah. through there. You got 200 kids you're trying to feed lunch. That's a lot of food. Yeah, and they eat predominantly rice and beans every day, mm -hmm. but can't eat rice and beans five days a week, no. so you've got to add a little tuna fish to it to give right. it a little flavor, or add some chicken to it to give mm -hmm. it flavor, uh, some goat, and so mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that goes on with with cooking for them. Mm -hmm. um, they use a lot of oil to do the rice and the beans. They use a lot right. of, of different things. So, But our biggest thing is to educate these children and give them the love of God. Uh, we start every day off at 7.30. School starts at 7.30. They come in the gate and we start with a prayer. Mm -hmm. We start with a Bible story that will teach them how Jesus loves them. Mm -hmm. And then we go with some songs, some music, uh, then they say the Pledge of Allegiance to their Haitian flag, mm -hmm. and they say the Pledge of Allegiance to the Christian flag. All right. And so we feel like that with voodoo being the national religion, mm -hmm. we have to overcome that and give them Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then once we have Jesus, math is easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's the easy part, right? Yeah, that's the easy part. <laughs> But yeah, we have a lot of little kids, three, four, five-year-old kindergartners, all the way up to, uh, our oldest one is 18. Okay. And so, she's she's really a special girl, and we, we love her to death, so. So, you, you, I guess you would become attached to some of these kids. Some of them, yes. You, you really get to know them. You mm -hmm. really start to, these, these are my kids. Yeah. Um, one of our children, her name is Shina, and Shina came to live with us um, when she wasn't quite two. She was so malnutrition, so malnourished, it was unbelievable. She could barely walk, she could barely talk. She just laid there and cried. Mm -hmm. And we thought, what is going on with this kid? And so we started almost force feeding her. Right. And before it was over with, we fed her five meals a day. Wow. And I had her eating peanut butter right off the spoon. Mm -hmm. And she would eat it like, and uh, protein powder. We took down the big things of protein powder. We were right. giving her protein shakes every day, trying to get her healthier. Mm -hmm. But we also found out she had TB. Oh. 
and uh, drug resistant TB is real hard to to mm -hmm. help a child that has it. But it took us nine months, five pills in the morning, five pills at wow. night, and this kid took those pills just like they were candy. I mean, it's cheap. I give my grandkids a pill. Here, you got to take a Tylenol, you know, or aspirin, <laughs> and then they're like, ah, <laughs> they're they're dying. But yeah. she just took it like it was nothing, That's and awesome. she did it every day, and she's she's free of TB mm -hmm. right now. Good, good. Yeah, and she's she's my baby. Yeah, I, I kind of had a special Become place. attached. Got a little, little special place right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would I would guess you know when you spend that much time nursing them and and loving on them that, that you would become attached. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you guys have been down there for quite a while now and uh, you've been successful. And We'd like to think so. <laughs> it sounds like you guys are. Um, how do you guys get your donations and, and that type of thing? Um, I'm always on Facebook uh, uh -huh. asking people to help us, to donate to us, to give us anything they can. We do food drives, we do school supply drives, sometimes clothing drives, different things at different times. Right. Um, just trying to get as much as we can to ship down. But money, we still need money. Money is our big thing because we have to pay the teachers. Right. And we have eight teachers at our school and taking on this new school, we're gonna have eight That's more gonna teachers. That's gonna be a lot of money. So yeah, we need, uh, we need a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. um, our teachers are paid twice what the average teacher makes wow. in Haiti. We try to make sure they can live, mm -hmm. maybe not comfortably like we think of comfortably, right. but at least where they're not right. having to stress every day over, am I gonna be able to feed my own kids? Yeah. Um, we ask people to donate on our website, mm -hmm. which is www.projectonehaiti.com, and it's spelled out O-N-E. So, um, you know, uh, Project One Haiti will take any donations in any amount helps. Yeah. I mean, we've had one lady that gave us a dollar a month for a long time, mm -hmm. and that was all she could do. Yeah. She was a little 80-something-year-old lady, and she gave us a dollar a month. And we've had other people that give us large amounts. Mm -hmm. um, we're always asking churches right. to help us in any way they can to, uh, if they do a missions board, a missions project, mm -hmm. to take us on as a missions project. We have three churches right now that are helping us. And who are those churches? Uh, the Church of we'll Chapel. Give them some credit right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Church of Chapel Hill, mm -hmm. Abundant Life, and Renew. Okay. And so those three churches, they have been so great for us. They have Good. helped us so much. Yeah, and, and if you're a church, if you go to a church or you're in charge of a church, <laughs> this might be a good thing to get involved with. Yes, we, we always are accepting donations, any kind. We have several churches that do food drives, mm -hmm. and so that will help us. Um, we ship 55 gallon drums, mm -hmm. um, and we shipped eight this last Thursday. Mm -hmm. We shipped eight barrels out of, um, of food and, and that kind of stuff, just all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the lady that's our shipper, uh, she's a Haitian, but she lives in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. She says, my barrels are the heaviest of anybody she's ever shipped. Really? Yeah. We take and load that barrel up so tight you can't get another thing in, <laughs> another thing. That's just squish it down. Uh -huh. And then we take a 50 pound bag of beans and open it up and let the beans fall down. Take oh, up the air spaces. Idea. Yeah. <clears throat> they, they, they're going to wash the beans anyway, so mm -hmm. they have to get the beans out when they're done. Right. And they, everything else. But, and the kids laugh because every once in a while they'll get a new tablet or a new uh, spiral bound notebook for school uh -huh. and there's beans stuck <laughs> in the spirals. <laughs> they laugh, they think that's crazy. But it's a surprise. Yeah, a little extra for yeah. lunch today. That's awesome. But, we'll uh, talk a little more about your organization in just a few minutes. Right now we've almost got the chicken brown to mm -hmm. way, the way we want it. Uh, we're going to take a little break, get the chicken browned all the way, and then we're going to start the other ingredients that are going in the Haitian right. stewed chicken. So we'll be right back. I have no idea why you put me to work. I, got, I don't. I got tired. I don't cook. Well, you're cooking right now. I guess. I guess this is my extent of cooking. <laughs> so we've got the chicken brown. We've got it sitting back here on a plate. It is by no means cooked all the way through. We just wanted to brown it. We've got uh, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, and onions sauteing in the wonderful juices that were left behind 
from the chicken. So we've got oil, we've got that chicken taste. It's gonna be fantastic. Gonna I'm gonna add good. just a little bit of salt to this. And we're gonna cook these until they're soft, probably about eight minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're gonna add some tomato paste. And then we're going to add back the chicken and the reserved marinade. That'll mm -hmm. add a lot add of, of seasoning. You're doing a fantastic job over there. Oh, thank you. And I feel so completely rested now. And you realize Refreshed. I don't cook. Well, I mean, you've been cooking this whole time. I don't so, normally cook. So you do cook. Uh, no, just barely. <laughs> um, anything that comes out of a can at my house. But I do love Haitian food. Yeah. They make some really good, really good food. This is smelling really good. We put the tomato paste in two tablespoons. Uh, and what we're going to do now is add the chicken back because it needs to continue cooking. So I'm just going to nuzzle it right in here. Oh, that is going to be good. Mm -hmm. Now stewing is the process of cooking by uh, almost submerging it in liquid and letting it cook at a lower temperature for a, a decent amount of time. In this case, it's gonna be about 20 or 30 minutes. We're returning our marinade to the pot and we're also gonna add about a cup of water. May wind up adding a little bit more just so we can get the, uh, the level of liquid up. You can also use chicken broth or beef broth, something like that, to add a little more flavoring. We're gonna bring this up to a simmer. And like I said, it's gonna go for about 25 or 30 minutes. We're gonna move this back there so it's All out right. of the way. And when we come back, we're gonna start the plantains and spicy dipping sauce. It is time to make the plantains and the spicy dipping sauce. So Plan plantains are a staple. Yeah. They eat them almost every day. And I made some just the other day, and I told myself, why don't you make plantains more? I love these things. They're great, especially when you make your own dipping sauce, which is what we're gonna do right now. Uh, so, have you ever cut anything up? Not much, I, <laughs> I, I have people that do that for me, thank you. She's got people. Well, today ah. she's got people <clears throat> again, because I'm going to do this. You're going to do the cut. I'm going to do it for you. Okay. So we got a couple uh, green onions again. Uh, just going to rough chop these up, because everything's going in the food processor. Do the, the entire thing. Oh, yeah. Don't want to waste any of it. So throw that in there. Now, again, we would typically use a scotch bonnet pepper. We don't have scotch bonnets. We're gonna use half of an habanero, and it's actually been fried or sauteed. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's a little sweeter than it would normally be, a little softer and not as uh, potent. Oh yeah, But they it's still potent. it's still gonna add that little spice to the recipe. And remind me not to touch my eyes now because I just... Don't do that. <laughs> yes. All right, so if you would, we need a half cup of mayonnaise. And then we also need a quarter cup of sour cream, which is right here. Come on, buddy. Throw that in there. And a little bit more. Gotta love that sour cream. There you go. Beautiful. We also have uh, some ricotta. We can use ricotta, queso fresco, or feta okay. cheese. So we're gonna do a quarter cup of that. All right, and we need a tablespoon of ketchup, which is about that much. Mm. 
Close enough. Yeah. And we need a lime, the juice of a lime. In Haiti, that's called a limon. Limon. Yes. Oh. Not a lime. That is fancy. The yellow ones are limes. Okay. These are limons. Limon. Try not to add any seeds. Whoop. <laughs> We're frying some of the lime juice over here. That's how you test to see if your oil's ready. Yeah. That's how they <laughs> do it in Haiti. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper as well. Okay. A lot of strong ingredients, but you know, that's kind of what you want with a dipping sauce because you're not well, using a whole lot. Haitian food is real strong. Yeah. A lot of spice, a lot of, of flavors. All right. Get that mixed up. Oh, this is gonna be good. Oh, yes. Check that out. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. pretty good. That's good. Yep, that's gonna be really good with the, I like it. With the plantains. So I'm gonna set this to the side. And we're gonna work on our plantains. Move this out of the way. Plantains are not like a banana. Nope. You have to get that out of your head. It is not going to taste like a banana. No, it, it has its own taste. And sometimes it's hard to peel because yes. it's not that soft banana feel that you, you think you're gonna get. Right. So how would you describe the taste? There, there's not another taste like it. It's very, very distinct, but it is very good. Yeah, um, it's oh, starchy. Starchy, um, it has kind of a thick taste to me, mm. but it's, it's really good. Yeah. They make great chips. They put them in soups, stews, all kinds of things. Uh, they use them like we would use a potato. Mm-hmm. Um, it's much more of a savory item than it, than it you know, it's, it's oh, yeah. just not, even though I believe it is technically a fruit because it does have seeds like a banana, mm -hmm. it's in the banana family, mm -hmm. uh, it is not sweet. It is not sweet. But they are very good. And that one peeled very easy, let's see. Yeah, yeah these, these are, these are not, not bad at all. Sometimes they come off in chunks. Yeah. So that was that was pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is we fry these twice mm -hmm. the way uh, I was taught. So we're gonna do about inch, inch and a half chunks. Are y'all not eating plantains tonight? <laughs> is this all yours? That's mine. <laughs> I like them. All right, so we're gonna put them in here in our oil that's heated up on medium heat. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. And while I'm frying these up, uh, do you have any stories that kind of stand out to you down in Haiti? Well, um, we were talking about my dog. Um, we have a dog that is um, a Rhodesian Ridgeback Doberman mix, and she stands about my waist high. Um, she's a big dog. Um, neither one of these breeds are commonly good with kids, mm -hmm. but boy, her name is Purdy. And Purdy loves those kids. When uh, they come for school every morning, she's standing out in the yard waiting for them. And when they come in and they do their Bible story, she's standing there waiting for them. She stands there at attention, listening to that Bible story. And she just loves them. When they go into school, she goes in the classroom too. <laughs> um, you go in, you'll see her. She'll be laying in the math room, watching him as he's writing on the board. She's. <laughs> She wants to sit and she'll get real close. She likes to get real close and put her head in people's lap. <laughs> uh, she's constantly 
with those kids and mm -hmm. loving on those kids. And uh, she sleeps with Watson, which we think is, is crazy. He's uh, eight years old and he's very small for his age. Uh -huh. And uh, Watson is our dog whisperer. Okay. He talks to Prudy, he'll talk to her, he whispers to her. And he talks to uh, our other dog who's named Belle. Mm -hmm. uh, both of those names mean pretty. Oh, there's know. a theme. I don't know how we did that, but we did. <laughs> um, but they're, they're great dogs and they love these kids and these kids love these dogs because great. most people are Tom not, um, most Haitians are not good with their dogs. Uh-huh. Um, Woohoo! <clears throat> dogs are kind of left to wander and they're not treated like we treat a dog at home. They're not. Right. Uh, they thought it was crazy when I said, no, Belle and Pretty need to sleep in the house. Uh, they didn't like that. Right. Uh, they thought that dogs not used always to that. have to be outside. But these dogs, they're, they're like the family. They're like one of the kids now. Uh -huh. And uh, Pretty sleeps with Belle. And Pretty sleeps with Watson. They get in his bed and sleep with him at night. Uh huh. It's crazy. But uh, I love that name, Watson. Watson. He is the coolest little kid. Um, Watson is is a real sweetheart. Um, he came to live with us when he was four. His mother had uh, three daughters and a son. Uh huh. And Watson came to live with us. He was not doing very well at all. His mother couldn't take care of him. And, uh, but she kept the three daughters. Mm hmm And that's, he's. That's gotta be stings. a little painful. Yeah, he has what we call a spirit of abandonment. He really is trying to figure out why she gave him away and not his sisters. Yeah. And once a month we have visitor's day and any parent can come and see their child. Watson takes a bath every, that Saturday he gets all dressed up. You need another plate, don't you? No. I need this. Okay. <laughs> he gets all dressed up and he looks like he's ready for company. Mm -hmm. His mother never comes. But he stands there every time and he waits and he waits. That's he so waits. sad. But he's a great kid and we absolutely love him and we know that one of these days he's going to grow up and he's going to help change Haiti. He's going to change Haiti for the better. So he's he's one of the special ones. Oh yeah. They're, they're ones in the group in our schools and, and in our home that you just fall in love with and you can't help but love them. Mm -hmm. um, some people think why do we want to help this crazy country? It's so crazy. It's got so many issues. Right. Why do we want to help it? If you go down and you love on these kids for a little while, you'll know why. It's it's totally different than anything else. Uh huh. Loving these kids is, is crazy. And it's the best way to help that country. And if you weren't doing it, who would? I'm sure if I wasn't doing it, God would send somebody else to do it. But he has given me the opportunity to do it just for a period of time and, mm -hmm. and I, for I'm absolutely season. in love with it. So All We're right. thrilled. We're thrilled that we get to help with this. And we're glad that you're doing it. Mm. We're glad that you stepped up and said yes and, and answered the call to do it. Well, TJ, I'm not that nice a person. <laughs> it's not me. Uh, it's all God because uh, God is in charge of it. I, I mean, I can't do it by myself and you know, I'm waiting for other people to help me and, right. and God sends them all the time. So what I'm doing now is <clears throat> I'm smashing these down, flattening them. They're gonna go back into the oil to continue frying. Yes. And then they'll be finished up. If it hadn't been a surprise, I would have brought you the plantain squash. It's a little wooden thing mm -hmm. with the plantain in it. <laughs> I have seen one of those before at a, uh, a Haitian restaurant. Yes. Whoops. These are nice and hot. Yes, they are. <laughs> That's why you use the squash. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to use your hand to squash these. Ooh. She might get third degree burns. How about that? But you're doing a great job. Thanks. You want to squash the last two? Oh, yeah. Now, they're not as hot anymore. They take up a little more space in the oil, so we may have to do this in two batches.
Can't wait to try them. They're we'll gonna be, be good. We'll be ready to eat these plantains probably in about 10 minutes, uh, which will be about the time that the chicken's ready. So when we come back, we're gonna put it all together and try it. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. I'm ready to eat. I'm hungry. He's making me hungry. <laughs> we'll be right back. Wow. I'm happy now. That looks amazing. Yeah. Smells good. Looks good. Hopefully it tastes good. I'm sure it's going to. It's going to taste good. Yeah. What do you want to try first? Um, I'm going to try that chicken. Okay, let's go. Let's go for it. Nice and tender. Oh, wow. Very good. Very hot, but yummy. Mm -hmm. mm. A lot of good taste. Mm. Get one of these onions. You did great with the vegetables. They're perfect. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. You did great with the chicken. Thanks. <laughs> this is mm. really good. Mm -hmm. I love Haitian food. Very good, they are yeah. very good. Very well seasoned. Mm. The recipe turned out really well. Mm -hmm. And the vegetables are nice and soft. I'd have Perfect. one more bite. Perfect. Mm. All right, so now we're going in for the plantains. Oh yeah. And the dipping sauce. Break mine. The reason you break it is so you can dip twice. There you go. Yeah. See, I know some things. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's yummy. So good. Mm. If you don't do anything else, you need to make the plantains Try with the, the plantains. sauce. Oh my gosh. Plantains are amazing. I gotta get some more of that. <laughs> Oh, I saw you broke yours in three pieces. Mm -hmm. So you can dip three times now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, mm. very good. You will, anybody that tries this would love it. That is amazing. So when you see those, that section in the, in the produce section at the, at the grocery store that you usually sort of avoid, that's got the weird stuff, get the plantains. Cut them up, fry them and make this sauce. The sauce just adds another level to it. Oh, it does. A lot of people don't eat plantains and things like that because they try it one time mm -hmm. and they don't know, they think it's a banana. They, right. they eat it raw and they're like, ooh. Yeah. It's kind of like eating raw potatoes. Yeah, you, you have exactly to cook it. You best. have to cook it. Yeah. Mm. Now, before we go, we definitely want to get your information out again mm -hmm. because uh, from time to time, you do accept regular donations, mm -hmm. but money's probably the best because mm -hmm. you can buy what you guys need. How do people do that? Go to our website, www.project1onehaiti.com. -E, okay. There's a place there where you can donate. Mm -hmm. There's also a place where you can sponsor a kid. Okay. Because we have a lot of kids that are going through school, mm -hmm. and so when somebody sponsors a kid, it's $30 a month. Um, that allows us to pay the teachers, to buy any supplies that we don't get donated, to pay for the gas that we use to cook mm -hmm. while we're there, the water. So many costs. Um, yeah, there's so many costs. And uh, to pay the rent on the school building. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on. And so you can sponsor a kid at project1haiti.com slash sponsor. Mm -hmm. It'll take you right to the pages. You can pick a child out and sponsor that kid or slash donate, okay. and it's a general donation. So you can sponsor, you can donate, go to the website, check it out, get involved with something, help your community, do oh, something yeah. good. Oh yeah, there's a lot that has to be done. In this world, they all need Jesus, they all need some help. We all need help, so. You gotta start somewhere. You can't help them all, but you can help at least one. That's how so we got our name. Project yes, One. Project one. one. Because when we went to Perfect. Haiti, we found out that there were thousands and thousands of these little kids mm -hmm. that weren't being helped in any way. Mm -hmm. And I knew I couldn't help. I think it was 30,000 kids. I couldn't help them, but I could help one. There you Project go. Project one. There you go. 
Well, I'm holding this plantain and I'm ready to put it in my mouth. So we're gonna have to end this show. This is Servings Kitchen with a Cause. We'll see you next month. Let's do Thank this. Thank you.